everyone, it's Rainy, and today we are going to be canning salmon for the very first time. Um, I'm gonna be using the new pressure canner that Daniel got me for Christmas. And um, also I just recently bought a Camp Chef um, for outdoor cooking, and I got that brand because supposedly you're supposed to be able to pressure can on it um, because the BTUs only go up to like 15,000 on it and you don't want to go above 12,000 BTUs on a pressure canner or it'll warp the bottom, um, at least according to the manufacturer's um, pamphlet. So um, this is my first time pressure canning and using the pressure canner, so I'm pretty excited. Um, maybe a little scared, but I've done, I've been watching a ton of videos um, reading a lot, researching, so I think I got this. All right, guys, so um, I've got a coho right here from my coworker. Five pounds of coho. And then nine pounds of Chinook that uh, my husband caught. So right now I'm just kind of cleaning it up. Um, I've got like two tablespoons of vinegar um, in this water and I'm basically just really trying to get a lot of the slime off. Um, the skin and the scales and the bones and everything are gonna stay in the jars because the pressure canning process is basically just gonna disintegrate that stuff. Um, I'm going to be packing the fish so that the skin is towards the inside and uh, the meats towards the out, you know, towards the glass, um, just so that it's easy cleaning. Um, I know a lot of people put the skin side uh, towards the glass because it looks all pretty, but um, I'm a practical person and I'd rather have an easier cleanup than um, something looking pretty in the pantry. So um, anyways, that's what I'll be doing. Um, Again, I'm just um, cleaning this all up. Um, the Chinook is still a little bit frozen because this was all frozen. It hasn't been frozen for very long, maybe um, two weeks maybe at the most for the Chinook. And the Coho, not much longer than that. So they're all a pretty fresh catch. So no freezer burn. Anyways, I'll bring you back when um, I start to get this all cleaned up um, and cut up. All right, so what I'm doing right now is cutting off all the kind of grody bits and some of the dark, you know, blood spots and stuff like that. Just trying to get rid of any of the nasty taste and stuff. Um, I did start with a sharp knife. This knife was given to me from a close um, old friend of my husband's. He also custom made the uh, leather th sheath that came with it as well for me. It's got my boys' initials and and uh, birth dates and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So um, I'm also chopping this up into some pieces, you can see right here, that'll actually fit into um, pint-sized jars because that's the size I'm going to use. And it's about three and three-quarter inch, but I'm not being particular. What I did was um, I kind of made one, put a couple little dots on there that just kind of gives me a little bit of guide so that... Uh, you know, I'm not spending a lot of time measuring or anything like that. But uh, anyways, I'm just gonna keep on uh, cutting this up and I'll bring you back when I uh, get done here. But maybe I'll uh, cup up, uh, cut a couple up here just to kind of show you what I'm doing. But
right guys, I got it all cut up nicely. So just um, about the size of the pint jar, basically up to the one inch headspace. Um, and this bowl is the Chinook, and this one over here, um, oh, excuse me, over here, this is the Coho, and then this is the Chinook. So they're still a, a tiny bit um, frozen still. So I'm gonna put them in the fridge and wait for them to uh, finish completely thawing. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go clean up my mess. Okay, so let's start packing jars. So the jars have been, in this case, sanitized, not sterilized, sanitized. So I have a sanitized um, setting on my dishwasher. So that's what I put all of the lids and the jars in. I'm working with the coho first. Um, the reason why you only have to sanitize is the process time. And we're, we're putting this in a pressure um, canner and the process time is pretty long. And so it's gonna sterilize itself. I'm just checking for uh, any kind of chips. I thought I saw one here, but not. So like I said earlier, I'm gonna just pack this in so that the flush side is facing out and look how great that cut is. So it's right at that one inch headspace, which I was looking for. So I'm just gonna pack a couple of these here with you guys. Um, and then I'll just do the rest really quick. See if I can bring you down a little bit more. There we go. Good job. Okay, how about that? All right, so you're supposed to pack it in pretty tight. I don't think there's really any way to actually get any more in here. Um, and I'm gonna actually put a little bit of just different things in each of these jars just to kind of try stuff. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is add in, I have Fresno um, peppers from my garden that I cut up. So I'm gonna actually put some of these in. So something like that, maybe some small ones down in here. I'm only going to do a couple of these with the Fresno and then just a couple with the, um, I have some cayenne as well and some um, garlic. Okay, what else do I need? I need a clean towel to wipe off the rim here. I'm gonna be putting three quarts of water into my canner. I have a Presto canner, I'll show you here in a second. Okay, so getting some more hot water going to put into my canner. Okay, dry lid. Oh, well, I got one, two items. I'm actually gonna put 
um, some salt in every jar. I'm going to go with a, a teaspoon. Uh, per pint and we're gonna go with an eighth maybe a quarter teaspoon of pepper okay I had to find my quarter teaspoon so I think I'm gonna put just a let me see yeah maybe an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper Okay, now let's put the lid on, finger tight, into the hot canner. Okay, so here's my Presto canner. You can see I've got that um, little plate thingy at the bottom that separates it for, so it's not sitting right on the bottom. And then you can see my first jar in there. Okay, so I'm just going to keep packing these. Uh, maybe throwing some of this peppers in now. Make it a little bit easier. Sorry if you can't see this, I'm kind of moving stuff around here. I don't know if it was easier or not to put the peppers in first. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to put in our teaspoon of salt. And eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Now you don't have to put any liquid in these because basically the fish is just going to um, cook up in the jar and it's going to create its own liquid. Again, I'm not a, this is the first time doing this, so I'm just reading what the instructions say. My canner holds um, 16 pint jars. So that's going to come in handy. So uh, I don't know if I'm going to have 16 put in here, but we'll see. I have no clue. Oops, I don't want this one on the outside like that. And maybe in this one, I'm gonna throw in a, some garlic. Maybe cut it in half here. And throw a couple of these in. Maybe a little of this belly fat. Maybe these other little short stubby ones. Oops, again, we don't want the skin side out. And what else we got in here? That might be too big. I'm looking for something small. Oh yeah, maybe one of these little tail pieces is perfect. Oh yeah, that's great. Um, by the way, I'm I am debubbling a little bit as much as I can. Okay, and then I'll do this one last one with you here. I'm 
I'm also going to be writing what I put in the jar if it's something that is not obvious. Like these ones here, I'm definitely going to be putting that there's coho in these so that we know what the difference is. So I'm going to continue on and then I'll bring you back when um, I have them all packed. Okay guys, so I got 14 um, filled jars in my presso canner. I have it double layered. I've got my three quarts of hot water in there. I'm about to put the lid on and we're gonna go out and put it on the camp shelf or shelf, excuse me. And um, this actually ended up working out to be about three quarter of a pound, um, maybe close to a pound per pint jar. So that's pretty cool in case anybody else wants to know how many uh, pint jars they need to get ready. I got lucky. I actually had 15 jars ready to go. So <laughs> I got lucky that I didn't need the last one or maybe unlucky that I didn't need the last one. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, guys, we're going to see if this works. So I have my camp chef. Now this is a 30,000 um, BTU um, camp chef. Um, I mean, it's 60,000 if you have them both on, I guess. But um, um, I have it turned down to about medium low. I just really do not know at what temp high is basically on here. So since most uh, stoves are probably around 10 to 12, um, BT, uh, 10 to 12,000 BTU, I would think that with this being 30,000, that maybe if I have it at around medium low, that that's kind of like high. Um, I am worried about having enough room to turn it down enough so that I don't go over pressure. Um, but I guess we'll wait and see. I guess thousands of people do this and uh, we'll see if it works for me too. All right guys, I'm starting to see a little bit of uh, steam venting. We're still waiting for um, this lock to pop up and then we can put the weight on. We do have to wait, um, once the, the lock pops up, we do have to wait for 10 minutes for steam to uh, escape. Um, that's probably just to make sure that everything's at the same temperature on the inside. But anyways, I will bring you back. You can see all that steam popping up. The lock hasn't come up yet, but it's just definitely starting to show a lot of activity. All right, it looks like my little popping gauge is getting really close coming up. I can see a little bit of moisture starting to come out. I can see it spit a little bit once in a while. We're getting really close. Once that locks or comes up and locks, we are going to set a timer for 10 minutes. All right, guys, the lock just came up. I'm starting the timer. Okay, so we have a steady flow of steam. I'm about to put the 15 pound gauge on. All right, now we're gonna wait for the pressure gauge to come up. I don't know if you can actually see that or not. But we're going up to 11 pounds of pressure. All right, so you can see that the gauge is getting pretty close to five. Once it hits five, I'm gonna actually turn it down so I don't overshoot the 11 pounds of pressure. All right, guys, we are at 11 pounds of pressure. I'm gonna start the timer for one hour and 40 minutes. Now the trick is keeping it at 11. Okay, so what Daniel and I found out, you can see it's at 11 a pound still, but what we found out about what's best when you're using one of these camp, uh, camp chefs is basically you want to put it on like a medium low, right between medium and low as your high temp. And then once it comes up to the 11 pounds or whatever temperature you're trying to get to, turn it immediately down to low. And then it'll be good for a while, but then um, it'll start to rise again. And what I didn't know, and thank goodness Daniel knew, there's a warm. See, the low is clear down over here, which is weird, but basically one, you have to switch it to warm and then you just 
I mean, you're making like millimeter adjustments to kind of keep it between the 11 and 12. I have a, I have it set pretty good right now. Um, so it's staying at right at 11, but you have to be right here at all times and keep an eye on that gauge because it actually, I don't know if you can see it, but I apologize for the, it's really hot. There we go. So it responds really quickly. And if you're not here, it can easily drop below that 11. Now, I've been here the whole time because I've been paranoid, so I haven't let it drop below. But I mean, I could see how responsive it is to the temperature gauge. So in case you guys are wanting to try this, I just wanna give a warning that you wanna be right here until you figure out what it is um, that works for your camp chef, basically. All right, guys, the timer has gone off. I'm going to turn it off and then we're going to move the canner um, carefully over to the non-heated side. All right, so we are going to wait until the pressure comes all the way down to zero and then the lock drops down. When that happens, I will bring you back. All right, so the lock has gone down pressure is at zero so I'm just gonna take the weight off once I take the weight off then we have to wait at least 10 minutes <laughs> sorry I'm a little bit nervous <laughs> okay guys so we're about to spend 10 minutes we're about to take the lid off Daniel is going to lift the lid away from himself oh yeah there it is. All right, so let's start pulling the jars out and see what we got. Okay, so <laughs> Dale's being funny over here, so. Funny, huh? Like to amuse you? Mmm, salmon. Oh my gosh, look at it, it's still bubbling. That's, That's perfect. The way. Hope it doesn't fall through the table. Why would it do that? Don't freaking say bad stuff like that. Okay. Lighting's not very good. Maybe I can go like this. There you go. <laughs> Look at it, it's still bubbling. So there's already pop, oh, did you hear that guys? Already popping going on. Oh my gosh, it smells really good. It's uh, Columbia River, Up River Bright. Freaking caught right out of Richfield, Washington. We have the coho in the bottom here. Look at that, just, oh, it smells so good. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> the fact that you can smell it, meaning, oh, you hear the popping? Sounds like a fishy situation. <laughs> oh, Jessica and puppies. What's up, puppies? Look at those bad puppies. They look like they want to have a go. Look at the blue sky. The coho. Sounds like we're doing a great job. All right, so in the end, we had 14 cans of salmon and five of those are the coho. You can see I'm still bubbling, look at that. So some of them have the, like this one here, has yowch, um, uh, the pepper in it. And just for the record, look, she was supposed to make, it's all mystery salmon now, but it's okay. It's not mystery salmon. Because we're gonna love it. She might have a grab. As usual, be kind and wander well. <laughs>